Welcome to Dexel Update. I'm Gwendolyn Hustvet. This is one in a series of videos where I introduce briefly topics that would be discussed in my Texels course. If you're just a rando that likes Texels, welcome. You're welcome here too. Today we're going to be talking about printing. Printing can start with just, uh, you know, like you did in elementary school, potatoes cut with designs, or I really like Mars erasers, right? They're nice and sturdy and they come in little blocks and I can cut a design. We think of them as stamping, but of course block printing with wooden blocks or metal blocks or uh, potatoes uh, is a basic printing method. From there, it gets fancier and more complicated as things tend to do. Uh, the potato block prints eventually turned into copper plate engravings that while being used to print books could also be used to print textiles. Lucky the copper is flexible because we can wrap it around a roller or on those rollers with a belt, nothing like fun with rollers. And now we have a printing machine that can print fabric so quickly that people in the industry call it printing money. A whole alternate way to print is screen print. Screen print produces uh, more naturalized shading and uh, can handle a huge depth of color because we have the uh, print paste going through the screen in tiny little dots that can combine with nearby dots of different colors to make the exact design we're looking for. So screen printing is an advance. We can do screen printing flat, like your screen printed t-shirts or fun with rollers, we can in fact make a roll out of the screen print, apply the paste to the inside of the roller, how clever is that, and actually run those screens just like we would run the roller printers. Don't forget that we can also print indirectly by taking dyes that are sensitive to heat, that use heat for their chemistry, printing them on paper, laying the fabric on the paper, and using steam to move the dye from the paper to the fabric. Come on, you've done this yourself, right? A transfer print where you printed out a design and then ironed it onto a shirt. We can do that with any fabric that's sensitive to heat or we can't use a roller that might be getting hot, right? Or with the dye can't get as hot enough on the roller as it needs to get, the steam will be gentle to the fabric and yet take the energy that's needed by the dye to move it onto the fabric. And of course, we now have digital printers. I can design a motif. I can send it to a company like Spoonflower. They can print it out in huge sheets of fabric for me. Uh, textile prints uh, can be copyrighted. So this is one area where designers can really make sure to protect their intellectual property, right? A Vera Bradley purse, for example, is just any old purse unless it has Vera Bradley's copyrighted fabrics. And then it's something that she can go to court to protect. Besides printing, we will also spend a little bit of time talking about some of the problems that come up with colors, both printing and dyeing. We'll talk about when the colors don't quite match, when the printing isn't lined up properly, when the color rubs off or bleeds, all sorts of different things that could go wrong. You wanna know about these things because if you get a product that doesn't meet your standards, understanding what went wrong can help you suggest how to do a better job. Super.